United Nations has been in great demand by the international community. But there have also been times when United Nations has been criticized, not being effective enough, inefficient, and even in not transparent and unaccountable. I'm fully aware of those criticisms. Even before I became the Secretary General, I heard so much, particularly from the United States and other Western world, that the United Nations was not doing enough and was not enough and accountable. I'm determined to reform the United Nations, to restore our trust and confidence, and to be accountable to the international community. Today, I think the pendulum is swinging swing back. Today, there is a new recognition that the United Nations is uniquely poised, placed to help solve many global challenges. One of the most urgent challenges is undoubtedly, again, you will agree, the climate change. Climate change is not the science fiction. It's a fact. It's not the future threat. It's the threat now, happening now and here. We see it through extreme weather, unseasonable, unseasonable hurricanes, long spell of drought and flooding. And we are still experiencing in the southern part of your country. We see it in the Arctic, where the ice is melting rapidly. Experts say that summers could be ice-free in five years, not, not 50 years, as experts thought only a year or two years ago. Last November, with the experts, I visited Antarctica. I saw glacier, glaciers vanishing and melting Population of penguin has been shrunken by half. Scientists I spoke to were alarmed, and so I was, and so am I now. The science has made it quite clear. The members, more than 2,000 scientists of Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, known as IPCC, has made it quite clear that global warming is now happening and is impacting all spectrums of our life. For that scientific achievement, they received Nobel Peace Prize last year, as you know very well. Last year in Bali, December Bali, in Bali, Indonesia, world leaders agreed to a roadmap toward climate change agreement for 2012, when the Kyoto Protocol will be expired. That new agreement should involve substantial cuts in emissions. There should be also significant help for the poorest countries. They will be, they will be hit the hardest, even though they did the least to cause the problem and they have the least capacity to address this issue. It is ironic of the history that those countries who have done almost nothing to this global warming phenomenon, they are the hardest hit people. They do not have any capacity. They do not have any money and technology. That is why I've been urging that this global warming issue should be led by the developed, developed countries. We have resources financially, technologically, but largely we are lacking political will to address this issue. That is why I have been urging the world leaders to take the leadership, to, to raise awareness and galvanize the political leadership. Here all of us need to have much, much wider global perspective in this as far as global warming is concerned. The leaders of the country at this time must see beyond their national geographical borders, transcending all these national interests. 
national policies, and national popularity, conscious of the voters. They have to look for the long future. And the students, who are the leaders of our future generations, they should be prepared to take this leadership role when our generation, I believe, may not be able to complete this task. We face hard policy choices and real uh, trade-offs. But climate change is also, can be a big opportunity. This is not only the investment. People believe that this is untimely, maybe waste of money at this time, when they have to spend money and technology on more urgent national priorities in Silicon Valley. If you go there, venture capitalists see green energy as their next boom. They are investing billions of dollars in this next great wave. By thinking globally, they stand to make fortunes and help save, save the world. Three months from now, in December, the negotiators will gather in Poznan, Poland. They will be there to discuss about what kind of uh, visions and shared visions international community should set for this global warming. We need concrete steps and measures from that meeting if we are able to agree by the end of next year, December 2009, to replace this Kyoto Protocol by a universally participating and inclusive, effective, a ratifiable, and balanced a treaty. Any loss in momentum uh, would be uh, dangerous indeed. Dear friends, when we think globally, we must think of less well-off people than we may be. I hope you are familiar with the idea of this uh, Millennium Development Goals. You must have heard a lot about MDG, standing for Millennium Development Goals. This is the blueprint adopted and committed by the world leaders in 2000, year 2000, when the international community was celebrating the new millennium. They were thinking of how to address this abject poverty, how to help people from diseases, and how to make gender balance, and how to strengthen the partnership between the government, businessmen, and civil society. We are more than halfway through now before we realize this goal in 2015. How are we doing now then? I think we're good, but not good enough. That is exactly why in about two weeks time, I'm going to convene again some level meeting of world leaders at the United Nations to discuss this matter, to let them recommit themselves, recommit and galvanize a political will to address this issue. Unless we take these measures, we will face a de development emergency. We see it, and we have seen it in global food crisis. You have watched the prices rise in your supermarkets. Imagine the plight of farmers in Africa who are simply not able to seed and to have seed and fertilizer to plant for this year. They will have to go hungry another year. This is a global challenge shared by us all. Being a global challenge, this needs a global response through global partnership. Yet there is a shortfall of many areas. The developed countries committed $10 billion every year until 2010. Still, last year, we have a shortage of $10 billion a day. I discussed this matter again 
during GA summit meeting.